course, more than just the political ramifications, the financial ones too. As the polls began to close, stock markets worldwide struggled to handle the results. Futures on the Dow Jones were slightly up at first, but then they went a down on the likelihood of Donald Trump winning the election as it increased. In fact, they plunged over 700 points at one point in a matter of hours. The US dollar index, Brent crude, and the Mexican peso also suffered following the news. The markets have mostly reversed their losses since, though, interestingly. Let's get some reaction from global financial markets expert Patrick Young is joining us now live. Patrick, hi there. So a wobble initially, things seem to have stabilised a bit. Is that going to be the picture going forward? What do you see in your crystal ball? Isn't it very interesting? I mean, last week it looked as if it was Armageddon for markets. Nine days in a row where the Dow Jones was down. We haven't seen that for a generation, 1980. Yet this week we actually get the news. This is classic financial market behaviour. Sell the rumour by the fact. What we're looking at at the moment is the marketplace has gone well. OK, the old-fashioned Obamaian, Clintonian concept of stability, that's gone out the window. What do they see coming in in Trump? Well, he might not suit the Goldman Sachs view of the world in some ways, because obviously they supported Hillary Clinton. But at the same time, what are we hearing as the messages that Trump wants to bring forward that he had on the stump? They were classic old-fashioned Republican virtues. The concept of low taxes, a competitive economy, that's catnip for markets. And therefore, if he continues in this way, it could be very, very promising for investors. Mm, and how's it going to go with his relationship with the banks? He's called himself an anti-establishment candidate, but of course he's also a billionaire uh, businessman who's done very well for himself along the way. What's his uh, future relationship with Wall Street and the financial establishment going to be then? Because of course it's so crucial. Look, it's very, very interesting because we are on the cusp of the world changing. I mean, the moment around me in Lisbon, we've got 55,000 people at a thing called Web Summit, which is the future of technology. And indeed, within that financial technology, fintech is very important. Banks reached their peak in 2009, 2010. Therefore, what Donald Trump is in a very interesting position is that he realises that in one way, banker power may be declining, but the power of Wall Street remains very strong. The interesting line is, can he work his way around in order to be a friend of the markets, say perhaps bringing back the capital that sits overseas, trillions of dollars in American corporate accounts, can he get that money back? How much, can he at how the same he time do that, relocate, re-energise the relationship with Main Street? How much power has he got to do that? What's he up against? Well, he's up against huge entrenched values within Wall Street itself. But mm. bear in mind this, he is the first man in the Republican Party since when? 1928, before the historical Great Crash, to actually have Congress, the Senate and the office of the president with him. Now, surely he must be able to deliver some sort of reform therein. Oh, yes, many banks are going to go down. They're going to be fighting like mad. But again, I say to you, finance is much more than pure banking. Banking, and it's the banks that have been trying to manipulate so much of Wall Street's culture in the last decade, and they are losing power over time to financial technology and other upshots. How will the banks be greeting his election as president-elect? Will they welcome it or not, do you think? The banks are clearly going to be very cautious because we saw a great deal of them. They broke for Hillary. They broke rather strongly for Hillary. Some of the banks were even trying to actually kill off dissent. They were almost refusing people to donate to the Trump campaign. How anti-democratic can you possibly become? Therefore, there is going to be a great deal of trepidation because actually in Trump's manifesto, there are a lot of things that want to bring finance closer to Main Street rather than just keeping it out in the rarefied world of Wall Street. And as a financier, I think that's wonderful because that's going to be better for the economy. But it's obviously going to be a huge battle because a lot of banks, they aren't going to want to give up their oligopoly without a fight. Financiers, of course, despite it all, also human beings they want to get on with their life. They've got kids to bring up, bills to pay, etc, etc. Trump has promised to make America great again. That's going to cost moolah. That's going to cost money. It's going to cost dollars. Can he deliver? 
there's two things here. If we're in the la-la land delusional concept that government delivers economic growth, of course it's not. But then on the other hand, do we want to become North Korea or Venezuela? I certainly don't think the United States of America does. No, what this has got to be about is delivering a fair deal that creates jobs. That's been a huge problem of the Obama legacy. The economy grows barely a couple of percent per month. It's really not doing anything on an annualized basis. But yet what you're seeing is huge numbers of people have just opted out of the workforce entirely, and that's why unemployment looks low in the United States of America. Trump realizes he needs to get those people into jobs. I think one of his key tricks is going to be this whole idea. There is a wall of money overseas from American corporations. He's going to want to try and entice that back, and if that can start investing in America, the multiplier effect is vast. We're talking about well over a trillion dollars. That's big money, even for the financial world, and that could be a lot of jobs. That could deliver Deliver the upswing that allows people to have a better standard of living, a better job, a better future. And I suppose, well, it would. It would make America great again. Well, you can't argue with that. Patrick Young, always good to see a global financial markets expert. Thanks for your input today on this uh, big day of the American vote. Just letting you know we're staying on 